Right guys, welcome to episode one of Cunts in Chairs. That was a joke. Welcome to episode five of the No Bullshit Training Podcast with your host, Christian Summers, Joe Murphy. I've actually got a yeah, pot, snack. Of, pot of skier today. <laughs> yeah, i got a snack. Busy guy, got to get the meals in. If you're wondering where we are, we're episode my patio. This is where my clients have been training since it's been legal. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and this is where people have been making gains for the last however long since it's been legal. And that's pretty much it, yeah. So, today, we haven't really got a, a plan of which what we're going to talk about yet, but I'm sure we'll get down some rabbit holes, as Joe says prior. Mm-hmm. Well, Joe, how have you been doing, mate, since you moved up? Yeah, good, mate. Pretty tired. Had some uh, few issues with uh, getting a place, but other than that, it's been pretty good. Done a few videos for the unit. Um, Done another, done another two today. I've got some more. Me and you doing some conjoined ones in the future. Yeah, but it's going good. Um, yeah, I've had a few inquiries about personal training. Online, online's picked up as well. I'm sure next week when the gym's fully open, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be that Christmas, you know, New Year's Day special. Yeah. Of everything, you know, picking up. So. Just really preparing for that, getting everything organised ready for next week. Sweet, so yeah. very exciting. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Ready to fuck you up. That's it, mate. Epic. Fuck How have you been? Epic. Sweet, mate. Just standard. Just same routine. Training clients Tuesday to Friday. Admin stuff on a Monday. Saturday, Sunday, trying to chill out, bit of training. That's pretty much it. Good, mate. What I want to talk about today is getting people into powerlifting or strength in general. And this might sound a bit out there for like the average person. And powerlifting, you might be thinking, what is that? What the fuck is that? Um, to start with, it's just essentially you go to a competition and you do the squat, the bench press, and the deadlift. I'm guessing the people that are watching or listening to this know what they are. Now, the reason why I think it's such a cool sport for a lot of people to get into is a lot of the people that I train, and just people that train in general, what you'll figure out is once you get into strength training and lifting weights you become addicted to that buzzing feeling of like getting better each week yeah definitely. and obviously at first you'll get strong fast you'll see improvements in like all your lifts fast and you'll get really it, it kind of like even if your goal's fat loss i'll speak to this in the in my, that instagram live i did with uh blobs today even if your initial goal is just fat loss once you get into the the training side of things and you get a good coach you start doing strength training and that why are you smiling? Because it's called him Blob. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Joe Frobisher or Frobisher Fitness, but his nickname from you is Blobs. But well, as I was saying, so like when you get into that rabbit hole of like getting into it and getting better, you realise this is sick. And like even if your goal's fat loss or just feeling good on the weekend, stuff like that, what you'll probably find is you'll get into the training side of things just because of the great feeling you get from progressing on lifts. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's like like you say it's going down a rabbit hole or it's I like call it catching the bug which means yeah that, that you, makes more sense going down a rabbit hole is the wrong phrase yeah, catching the bug of oh I like well I like, I like the feeling of getting better each week or I like the feeling of progressing from last week or especially I think that helps obviously with online clients is keeping track of records of what you did throughout the, your training cycles and even fat loss and weight loss like keeping track of it each week noting it down even with pictures and with numbers it's just cool to be like god four weeks ago i've made such such improvements and then be like why were not i doing this earlier or why was why is it taking me so long to be get on this because it is very 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 addictive yeah exactly and like a lot of my female clients they'll like they'll buzz off the feeling of doing like the first push up or the first pull up. And like I said, powerlifting might feel it sound intimidating at first, like going to a competition and doing it in front of people, but it gives you it kinda it kinda gives you like a a day and a goal to strive for. And it and trust me, because I, I just I only I've only done one competition back in uh, two thousand eighteen. And when I had that goal of competing there and hitting certain numbers I was so much more, it gave me that extra bug, that extra bit of motivation in my training to like get better each week that you already kind of feel anyway. So 
it's just sick really and it's a sport like what other sport is lifting weights do you know what I mean where it's just like so simple and basic but it's something you can do in the gym and anyone can train for who has access to the gym I think it's just sick so I, I honestly think anyone that's that started weight training and that's getting used to that feeling of like getting better obviously at the minute during lockdown you might not have had access to loads of kit but if you love that feeling of getting better honestly get yourself signed up to a powerlifting comp and fucking give it a crack I'm going to sign up for one this year the only reason I didn't do one in uh, the years prior is a couple of years ago a fucking bad string of injuries and yeah, last year it was just the, the ones that I wanted to uh, compete in were cancelled but and then the, I, the ones closest to date of, like you said been booked up ASAP as well yes That's they it. have yeah so. so you've got to just keep your, keep your eyes peeled um, federations that you can compete in so there isn't just one so note this down guys if you do want to have a look into it so there's the GBPF that's GBPF so that's uh, Great British Powerlifting Federation and then there is so within that if you're in Yorkshire and Huddersfield area they usually do a re like a regional one for that anyone can join in on um, which is called the Yorkshire North East Open and that is usually in a March but I don't know if that's going to be pushed back to like May time or June and then there's usually one back end of the year like November so that would be a great one for you guys to train for if, you, if you're interested in doing it it's, that one's drug tested and if, if, you come like, if you come in top three you'll get drug tested or something um, so if you, if you really want to have a crack at it um, that's like a really good one to go for and then there's also the BPU isn't there and then there's another one the GPC but I don't know what the British Federation is called of that but it's called the GPC that's the global well, our global, global oh, yeah, isn't it? it's global yes yeah, so I don't know the G I think it's called G I think it's called GBBC <laughs> I, think, no, I think it's GB GPC maybe I'm not sure but they I actually messaged them on Instagram uh, so that's GPC guys and I think it just says GB at the, be at the beginning for like great oh, British right. I think I'll GPC GB yeah yeah, yeah. Like I don't know yeah so basically that guys there's the GBPF the BPU which is the British Powerlifting Union and the GPC which is on the Joves on about all of these are run in the UK and they all have Instagram accounts and I'm sure you can like message them or email them and, and like get in contact for when the local competitions will be um, or if you want you can message me and I'll have a look for you because I'd be excited to help anyone get rid of something like that oh yeah I'd yeah, love it I'd rate it I'd rate it, yeah. I'd rate it. Um, but yeah and so I'm signing up for one this year Job is as well obviously we don't know which yet because they just haven't uh, announced the calendar for the GPC and the GBPF Um you'd be looking to do one in September if there was somewhere around there September. you'd look to like, like the peak around there wouldn't you yeah that's uh, the goal yeah and for those that don't know what peak means it just means like well peaky performance um, so yeah. basically be at the toppest level of strength during that time so you will be preparing your heaviest list for that time so you'll be aiming to lift the most amount at that day basically isn't it that's it man that's and it. you know lift weights get dates that's it mate lift weights get dates not me though <laughs> not, me, no. not me penny <laughs> <laughs> right so that that's like one thing that I really want to speak about and I, and I think I want to get more people into it that are in the Huddersfield area and I'd love to if anyone wants to like specifically train for that me and Joe would fucking love to train you for that like I'm sure you would as oh, well I would Def love to definitely, yeah, 100%. definitely so that's one thing I wanted to touch upon that do you want to speak about powerlifting at all anymore like I know you do want to, but like anything, I anything that uh, if coming up with your competition, yeah. Do you? How do you feel? Obviously, for those who don't know, you're obviously trying to put on weight. Mm -hmm. uh, is your plans to go above the category and then cut down a little bit for it, or are you going to maintain around the similar? Right. Okay. Level? Okay, yeah, so this is another thing, guys. It's a weight class sport, so you're not going to turn up and there's going to be like massive people and you're all in the same uh, weight, you're all you're in the same competition yeah. and you're, you're not going to be up against absolute beasts if you're an absolute beast. Um, not that you can't be an absolute beast if you like. Uh, but yeah, basically, I'm doing the. I'm currently sitting at 98.7 kilos now, morning weight. And the, the weight classes I do, they slightly different, vary based on federation, don't they, sir? It'd either be the 100 kilo category in GBC or BPU or the 105 kilo category in the IPF. Now, to be honest, I'm just going to see wherever wherever it pans out. And I haven't decided yet, to, in all honesty. But I don't think I have to get heavier than 100 kilos to compete well now. I don't think, I don't, to be honest, I don't think I need to be as heavy as I am now. 
mm. um, but I'm going to keep the food high because performance and training is going well mm. and just see where it ends up um, and as long as I'm never I'm not going to do the 93 kilo class this year so I'm not worried about getting lower I'm just basically going to keep eating as I am and just make sure that I get much higher really and just see what comes up and fucking sign me up and make sure I don't snap my shit up in my training exactly no spinal. No spinal. That's it. That's it. Um, what else do I want to talk about as well? Oh, recovery. So, okay. obviously, I listened to a, a good podcast the other day, the British Strongman podcast, um, which is by the MSD system. You know, Shane German. Yeah, yeah, the dragon. Yeah. yeah, the dragon. The fucking dragon. It's yeah. cooking crackers, that guy. Isn't yeah. it? I listened to their two podcasts the other day, and one of the interesting things, like, obviously, when we're talking about recovering from his training sessions, from his strength training sessions or whatever, we usually think of, you know, nutrition, sleep, like hot, cold, compression, fucking mobility work, all this kind of stuff. But a very crucial point of recovery is the program itself. Well, oh right. You, so it's actually yeah, like balancing it out that you're you, not doing enough recovery work to work to Exactly, rest. exactly. Like if you're finding yourself getting to the point where things are hurting and you're having to it's like oh shit too late I'm having to like imply you know get start doing loads of recovery different modalities oh, I need to get some like abdomen past I'm like fuck what, like I might get some CBD I start doing hot baths frequently I might do some cold therapy stuff I might do some cold baths do you know what I mean making sure everything's on point and really if you get the basics of making sure your program isn't too much for you not to recover from yes, point, yeah, and then it's just getting on top of your sleep it's fucking golden and it just yeah. it set a light bulb in my head so obviously, I don't know about you, but I think about fucking all these different things. Like, well, I do know, you do. Do you know what I mean? We geek out on this kind of shit. We think about everything. It's like, fucking hell, maybe we just, sometimes you think, oh, I might just absolutely be doing a bit too much. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, you do. It's like the most it basic very, thing right in front yeah. of you. It's very true. It's, I think... It sounds boring, doesn't it? Uh, it's, I, it's fucking... It's true. I think to an extent that, obviously, in your head, sometimes you can go down thinking more training equals more results right but like you said if well if you're not recovering from them workouts and you ain't got the recovery in it's more it's not always better 100 percent. So. 100 percent. i'll give you guys an example right so the year that i first ever deadlifted 260 kilos in the lead up to that that was like a big landmark for me like i'd only have deadlifted 220 no, I deadlifted 230 once before that. So I put 30 kilos on my deadlift in, in maybe less than a year, right? And the entire lead up to that, I didn't fail a deadlift once. And I very rarely grinded out one. And my technique never went off. Now, since then, and since I hit 260, I've gone through periods where I have let my technique slip and I have grinded out heavy weights and I've got hurt. And then likewise, in the bench press, I've I've had issues with, well, I've had like pain and stuff in like my right pec, my right delt, my right wrist. The wrist don't bother me, but the pec has in the past. And it like puts me off, I end up overtooking on this side, all kinds of shit. And like in previous blocks, I've done like, oh, I'm gonna do as many as I can on this weight today. And I'm gonna go do some dumbbell press, and do this, and do that, and like I might end up doing like five different sets to failure. Let me just decline. Someone must have heard the <laughs> lift weight to get dates. So yeah, someone must have heard that. They must have, Sorry, they guys. Must have heard it. <laughs> that, Sorry, that, was, Penny. Sorry, that, Penny. That, that was the other half trying to ring me. Hopefully, oh. she didn't try to ring me again during this. Um. What were I saying? Oh yeah, so recently, so I've, I've been there before where I've done like bench bench pressing twice a week to increase my bench press, that's one of the powerlifting movements. Like one week I go like heavy, like lower reps, making sure I leave something in the tank. The other, the other week I'm doing like an AMRAP, so that means as many reps as possible. And then I do like incline dumbbell press and some press ups. And it doesn't sound too crazy, but like this old injury came on and I was like getting pain and discomfort. And then I've got to taper back and then I've got to try and progress again like it's eight weeks later. And I end up just like, chasing my own tail I'm not really getting anywhere like I'll progress get real, get quite strong get like PB territory do something which I struggle to recover from like doing an AMRAP as many as I can with a weight that's, that I probably had done before and then it's just coming back down whereas 
I'll give you an example of recent date. So last week, I started, I incorporated a closer grip bench press into my program. Just, just another variation of bench press, not loads closer. And I did five sets, and in every single one of them sets, I stayed at least three reps away from failure. So I had at least three reps in the tank, three or four. I did that, everything felt okay, following days. This week I came in, my predicted max, based off how the weights were feeling, went up by like six kilos. And I just I recovered from it, and I got fucking loads stronger from it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that's a very short period of time, and you could argue, obviously, well, you can argue, it's the novel stimulus, it's a new exercise, so you're going to get better at it fast anyway. Mm-hmm. But there's definitely something to be said. If your goal is to get strong, muscle building, separate principles, if your goal is to just get strong, there's something to be said for keeping reps in the tank. It's quite common. It's quite... You, when you. It, when you listen to people and other coaches and stuff in podcasts, you do hear it a lot that that RP8 don't go, well, a lot of people never ever go above RP8 unless people for a competition. Uh, explain what RP8 is. To so RP8 is basically there's it's a scale. The fucking got it's it's the money shot. It's the money spot. Is RP8? It's the one. Like if you don't do RP8, you fuck. Is that fine? You're picking it up. No, I'm joking. You're picking I'm joking. it up too much. Right? Listen to so. There's a scale, basically, of it, RPE stands for rate of perceived ex, ex, perceived exertion. Perceived ex, exertion. So, you go from one to ten. One is very, very, very minimal, minimal training. You rate it at a very low scale, so second to nothing. Ten is the hardest amount you can do so there's nothing else that you can do so it will be like a grind a one rep max so the most or an amrap like you said if you did an amrap it would be the most you can do the, the most many reps you could do and you would have to rate that at 10 because you couldn't do any more so on rp8 is two reps you can do reps in reserve like you said yeah so it's when you can do two reps more but you hold back, so you're holding yourself back because you don't want to overstimulate and deteriorate the muscles so bad that you can't recover from the workout. So RPEA, when you hear other podcasts or other people talk, they sometimes go, generally don't go above RPEA unless you're peaking for a competition because you can't recover from the workout. Yeah, so yeah, that's it basically, yeah. So, and another way, like you said, is referring it to reps in reserve. So, an RP10 is you've got no reps in reserve. RP9 is you've got one rep in reserve. RP8, you've got two. RP7, you've got three. RP6, you've got four. And then as you get further down the scale, it gets a little bit less accurate, I think. I think, yeah. yeah. I think, I, I hope no one's measured anything RP1 maybe you know yeah, yeah. nine left <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah nine in the tank <laughs> the only person I could think would say that is oh, there's a few people let say one person in the blobs Hursty and Lucy <laughs> I was just going to say Hursty but... oh right yeah yeah there's a few I come to mind anyway yeah. pass that pass that <laughs> you started listing them up. Yeah, I've got <laughs> many one, this one. there's millions of people <laughs> this, one, think... this one this one they say they've got a million Easy. in the tank uh, all right, got, I go right. Next set, you got to do as many as you can. They'll do Let's one see. less rep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. They'll do one more rep. That's it. Um, okay. Second set. That was that's an important principle of recovery is nailing the program. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another thing is like the heat stuff. So like, no, well, the heat, the cold, all the different shit, nutrition. Um, and I was actually thinking the reason why I got onto this is, and this is a bit off topic, is yeah. I was. I was thinking about getting a lazy spa. <laughs> it's, it's, is that, this episode of podcast is you selling the lazy spa to Penny? No, yes. <laughs> I'll just say fast forward it to minute whatever we're on and she'll give it a listen. No, yeah. but in all seriousness, yeah, that's 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 a bit silly really. But the lazy spa, obviously, it will promote blood flow. You know what I mean? I'm not, I don't work for lazy spa guys. But you can get the, you can get the same benefits from a hot bath or using the sauna or anything like that. But essentially, like, 
heat helps promote blood flow, which therefore helps promote recovery, flushes out toxins, etc., etc. So um, you feel pretty class, and it also helps you relax mentally and physically. So that means so basically you, that means I want a fucking lazy <laughs> spa. It's gonna help so, the recovery. That means it's essential. You have to have a lazy spa. The bath is not just not good enough. Yeah, the bath's not gonna cut it. <laughs> you, can't, you can't look at the stars, can you? It's all for that mental benefit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't yeah. look at them harsh. I, I don't mean, look at them about, harsh what lights. What about the cold water immersion? That's just out of the question. Yeah, uh, well, you don't want a cold water. I'm trying to make gains, up. mate. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can't really the cold water stuff. That's not. That's you don't want to do that. Well, no, I actually do want to have a crack at the cold water stuff. This is another topic. So the cold water stuff. I know you've had a crack at some. Yeah. So, from what I remember, we I did a lit review on it at university. Some of the some of the recovery stuff and the cold water immersion. What I found was, or what I, some of the research suggested was, that it's. Good for endurance athletes with performance wise and recovery. It's good for reducing like, you know it has like yeah. inflammation and pain to you know what I mean. Mm. However, it blunts the response that's responsible for building muscle. Yeah. And I don't think many people talk about that, do they? No. Uh that is true. But I did also hear that it's within a certain time frame, isn't it? Yeah, so this is this is what so this is, so for people that are listening if you were to do cold water immersion, what I'd recommend, always that I, I did it earlier on in the year. I did it last year in January. I just used to do it. In my, I used to have cold baths. I didn't. I didn't go to the jobs. Didn't see because lived in Cornwall, so I had the fucking I had the lush sea to go have a little swim around. It was so lush. Yeah, it wasn't lush at all. <laughs> lush, lush, you, you, lush, yeah, 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 freezing. You went inside out. Yeah. yeah. But um, what I'd recommend is, if you're having, say, for example, a deload session. Sorry, if you have got a deload week where you, that the week of that. The goal of that week isn't to necessarily promote loads of damage and uh, create a hypertrophy response to build loads of muscle. I'd say it's a great opportunity to use it there to help bring down inflammation. So if you have a deload week every say six to eight weeks, I'd say it'd be a good opportunity to do it there. And then if you do want to give it a go during the training, like during hard training times, to me it makes sense to do it on a rest day. So it's further away from that post that post cycle window where you, it, I think inflammation really cool. is a Thanks. natural part of. And inflammation is a natural part of like damage, you know, stress recovery, adaptation, getting better. So for me, it doesn't make sense to do it straight after training. However, saying that, you look at the strongman athletes, the super heavyweights, they're absolutely fucking hoench. They're doing it like Brian Shaw, Eddie Hall, when he was world's strongest man. Half four. Half four. All these great athletes that are like world's strongest men, they used to do it every day, didn't they? A lot of them did it every day and they swore by it and they did the contrast therapy. Now, that always makes you think, fucking hell, should I do it? But then you've got to also remember, these guys are eating that much food. Like, if you're like, the most anabolic things are food, calories, and sleep. steroids. And sleep. And sleep. And these guys are taking steroids and they're eating in a massive calorie surplus. They're all fucking heavy as fuck. They might not be in a surplus all the time, do you know what I mean? And they'll be sleeping loads because that's all, they, that's pretty much, that's their main thing that they did. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'll let you speak a bit on the cold water stuff. You've done it recently. You've done yeah. it more recently. I mean, um, it ages. What's your thoughts? I think, I think it does work with inflammation. If you're doing a lot of training, and you do have aches and niggles and stuff. I think it does work with stuff like that. I think it obviously it's gonna reduce inflammation. I think, from a psychological point of view getting in cold water does have something to do with improving your psychological like doing something that's horrible once a week there's also something in that I'm not sure what that is but there's something in it I think in my opinion and what do you mean like there's a, there's a benefit to doing something that, that you shocks like. the system and yeah. it's not nice once a week yeah I think that's something in that and I also think I think but obviously you don't know with these like marginal it's a bit similar to the supplement thing we it's like a I don't know if it's a, is it a significant amount that we've gone into right, where I come yeah. down to is, is it, it essential? essential is it essential is it it's significant no um, it's not it's not essential it's not significant no. but there's something about it sorry guys I'll just decline this again No, no, no. We're straight. We're fucking straight back to it. 
<laughs> well, I'll just grab my phone and make sure she doesn't ring me again. Oh, no. Anyway, yeah, I don't think it's essential. I don't think it's... Maybe it's not a significant amount, unless you're... I would suggest that if you're getting a lot of niggles, maybe. Or like a lot of niggly injuries. And then I would say... Don't worry, I'll just talk to myself. Then. Sorry, man. <laughs> just make sure the other half don't podca- try to ring me during the podcast. Uh, don't worry, mate. Uh, no, I'm joking. They... Yeah, I think it's not significant. Not everyone needs to be doing it. But if you're getting, I think there's a lot of other stuff that could help with it. We've obviously tried the other recovery techniques, something that's maybe not as time straining or you have to, if you could get away with other stuff like stretching and stuff and it goes away and work on mobility, then I'll do that. Obviously I'll do that first. Yeah. And then I wouldn't say it's essential. Yeah. But I liked it. Yeah, fair I enough. Did, I did like it. Fair enough. But I don't think it's essential for Pokemon. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. That's that's interesting, to be fair. And this is a, just before, like, we're going to have to end this very shortly. I've got I've got a client that's going to be walking in the Gainzebo in literally less than 10 minutes. So I'll have to call it shortly. Okay. But another thing I'd like to just touch upon is if you are feeling a bit beat up from training, I think one of the best things you can do is just movement in general. And everyone's like, oh, this is such a great mobility routine. This is such a good. The bike, using the stationary bike's awesome. Going for a walk's really good. Having hot baths really good. A lot of these things they just essentially promote blood flow and like get obviously the hot bath don't get your body moving, but all these things just get your body moving. Like I'd recommend active recovery where you, active recovery whereby you are going through movement as a form of recovery is one of the best things. Like I think it's more about that than there being a spe- like a special. Um, than there being like a special mobility exercise or a special uh, rehab prehab exercise, I think it's more just the fact that you're actually just moving your, your body, and yeah, then getting yeah. into getting some good range of motion and stuff. Yeah, on, on your rest days, I think that's one of the best things you can do for recovery. If, if anyone's yeah, if anyone's to try out, yeah, that's be, that'd be what that'd be one for me. But Movement not to not medicine. to the extent that it's a workout. Though. That's something else that sometimes becomes an issue when you say, oh get on the stationary bike or do t- then you t- think of your message been on the stationary bike for two hours body like, feels fucked been, been doing sprints on the stationary bike yeah yeah so, so, yeah, so, so by the way guys when I'm talking about active recovery movement is medicine and getting your body moving for recovery I mean low intensity yeah. your heart rate shouldn't be super high it shouldn't be super elevated and you shouldn't it shouldn't fit, be like an additional stress on your body it should be quite low you shouldn't be sweating your, you're sweating your tits out no. good, I tell you what good job we've got the gazebo I don't know if you can see on here guys but we've got a bit of snow yeah, I'm buzzing that I moved up here. Yeah, <laughs> straight up from Cornwall, uh, aka Abby. Uh, uh, mint. Right, guys, right. that's gonna have to be us. Cool. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks, thanks for watching. Bye, Yeah, see you later, mate. See ya.